Hello all, my name is Yash and in this video, we will learn about coroutines. This is the very first video of our coroutine course. If you don't know anything about the coroutines, then trust me, this course is for you. So this is the first video and make sure you're watching this video with full concentration because if you have got this video, because from the next videos, we're going to start about the practical implementation of coroutines. In, and in this video, I'm going to tell you the theoretical part, which is very important to understand any concept. So to understand any concept, we should always ask three questions before learning anything. And those three questions are, what does it mean? Why does it even exist? Or why does it even came into the picture? And how does it work? So we will learn about this third question in the further videos, but we will want to cover these two, what and why in this video itself. So what is coroutine? So to understand what is coroutine, let's uh, let me tell you some basic concept of Android. Let's suppose we have this process. In this process, we have few instructions to get execute. Okay. Now to run this process in Android device, we have a main thread. Okay. Now, if I'm allowing this main thread to execute this process, and let's suppose this process is taking around uh, seven seconds to run or to finish now I have a main thread in Android and I'm giving instruction to this main thread that please complete this process which will take which will gonna take seven seconds so if main thread is uh, executing the seven seconds of process then our UI will gonna stop then our applications UI will gonna stuck because main thread is already busy in executing this process this is the most important reason why we do not consider our main thread to execute any process or any long running task. Then what is the use of this main thread? The UI drawing of our application, let's suppose this is our application. This is our screen of Android device and it has some uh, edit text fields and we have one button here. Okay. So when user will interact with this field, so main thread is responsible to show the user that uh, this app is working properly. Okay. And in the background, what's happening here is main thread redraw the UI in every 16 milliseconds. Okay. Every 16 milliseconds, main thread will going to redraw the UI of the application. This is the reason why a user feels the app very responsive. If anything occurs in between, like main thread is busy in executing any other process, then this 16 millisecond time will get delayed by seven seconds. And this UI will going to stuck for seven seconds itself which is a very bad behavior and this will gonna hang the application uh, in technical terms there is a term called as dropped frame so basically the frame will get dropped and user will see a lagging application which is a very bad user experience so to overcome all this we have one thing which is known as async calls by using these async calls we can create a separate thread to execute this seven second process and our main thread will gonna do its obvious jobs what it is meant for and this async uh, calls will be responsible for doing other jobs. So basically the seven second process I'm taking in a generic way. This can be anything like downloading a file or uploading an image or, or making a network request. Anything can happen in the seven seconds or maybe more than that. So this async call will be responsible for that. So I hope you have cleared the basic concept till now. So now let's talk about what is coroutine. If we'll break the name of this coroutine, that is co and routine. Co means cooperative and routine means to do something and coroutines are basically called as the lightweight threads. To simplify this, we can say that whatever the jobs that thread can do, coroutine can easily take over that, but in a very simple manner as well as in an effective way. And why I am calling the coroutine as a lightweight thread? I'm going to show you this by using, I'm going to show you the practical example of this, that why people call this coroutine a lightweight thread. Basically, just remember one thing, coroutines are not threads. Threads are a different concept, but coroutines work is as same as threads. Now let's talk about why this coroutine even came into the picture. So if I'm talking about the threads, the threads are very expensive to use in terms of memory. Like they take a lot of memory to create and run. 
and coroutines are very cheap in memory and you might be wondering that how can i say this thread is very expensive and coroutines are not so do not worry about it i'm going to show you the example of this in a practical way in few minutes let's just focus on the theoretical concept right now so this thread is very expensive and coroutines are not that much expensive okay these are very lightweight threads this is the reason why they call why people call this coroutine as a lightweight thread because th their job is same as threads but they are not threads they are like a thread coroutines have uh, pretty much simplify the async calls and one more thing that coroutines are not any new concept obviously it is new in kotlin but, but this is a very old concept in other languages kotlin have introduced this coroutine in 1.3 version and now i'm going to show you the practical example of why coroutines are lightweight why coroutines are called as lightweight threads and why threads are expensive in terms of memory and why coroutines are not expensive in terms of memory so let's redirect back to our android studio this is one project i've created and in this project i'm gonna create one file one kotlin file i can say um, i can write it as test in this file i'm gonna create one main function okay and to just show you the coroutine performance in as compared to thread i have to implement the dependencies of that I have to insert the dependency of coroutine. So let's uh, go to Google and search Code Labs coroutine. Code Labs is nothing but the official Android developers website to learn any concept. You can use it. This is very useful. Okay, so here you can see the third option run the starting sample app. After selecting this, scroll down and uh, you can see two dependencies here. Okay, copy this and paste it in our gradle as you can see we have as you can see here we do not specify the version of uh, coroutine let's get back to code labs and you can see you can find the latest version here open this this is the coroutines github page and the latest version is going on 1.5.1 1.5.1 let's sync the project and now let's talk about this a little bit why do we need two dependencies here because uh, the first dependencies is obviously for coroutine to get the coroutine concepts and second is to telling the ide that we are using this coroutine in android okay okay so gradle uh, synced successfully now so first let's see how a thread will perform okay to create a thread in kotlin just you have to write thread and in this uh, lambda of thread let's try to print something now this will gonna simply print a thread which will gonna run on a separate thread but I need to repeat this process for around uh, 100,000 times okay let's try to repeat this process to repeat a process in Kotlin we have a repeat method and let's try to repeat it with 100,000 and let's make it more readable I will put underscore here okay if you're wondering about this underscore do not worry about it this is just for a, a reading purpose this is if i'm removing this underscore nothing will gonna change okay but uh, it's a good practice to write underscore if the uh, if the number is more than four or five digits okay so now this process will gonna repeat this thread so now this process will gonna repeat hundred thousand times and this will print thread how to calculate the time of this like how much time a thread is taking to print this thread 100,000 times to measure the time we have something called as measure time millis in Kotlin now let's put this code inside this this will gonna return us the time okay and let's and let's make a local variable to store it and let's try to print this let's try to print the timing time taken time taken measure time millis and this will gonna return us the time in milliseconds that is we have to divide it by thousand so that we can get the exact seconds all right let's make the curly braces okay 
Now let's try to run this code and check how much time it will take to print 100,000 threads. So as you can see, thread is getting printed and uh, this will gonna print for around uh, 100,000 times. And to show you the memory of my system right now, because as this says that thread takes a lot of time and memory. So let's go into this performance. And if you can see here, Android Studio is using almost 100% of my CPU and, and this is taking high power usage. So let me pause the video because this will gonna take a while. So as you can see, the process finished and if I'll scroll, this has been printed 400,000 times and if I'm scrolling a little bit up, you can see time taken is 140, which is 140 second that is that that's almost like uh, more than two minutes okay so now to create hundred thousand threads our memory takes around 140 seconds now let's just try to replace this thread by coroutine now obviously we do not know as of now how to create a coroutine so do not worry about the concept i just want to show you how coroutine is very effective as compared to thread I just want to compare both thread and coroutines to do so do not worry about the code what i'm gonna write we will gonna study about everything line by line in the later videos so we will gonna replace this by launch and i'm gonna write run blocking okay let's just import this and let's try to move it in the scope of run blocking all right now we have this run blocking and we have this coroutine here which is which will print which will print coroutine obviously and now let's see how much time a coroutine will gonna take to print this coroutine for 100,000 times. Let's try to run this code. So our thread have taken around 140 seconds. Now let's see how much time coroutine takes. Okay, coroutine is already finished and uh, I can't see the time taken by coroutine which we have printed here. Uh, let's take it outside the scope of run blocking and let's make a separate variable as time time and make it here as long variable so this time we're gonna store the time of this task here and we will print it at the end so basically we have moved this print statement after this run blocking code now let's try to run again because our time was not got printed okay so as you can see the time taken by the coroutines is zero seconds so this is how we can say coroutines are very cheap in terms of memory and in time complexity wise so if you can so if you have any doubt regarding this like how can this be taken as zero maybe this is printing the same value we have inserted here let me try to insert one more zero here and make it one million times instead of hundred thousand let's try to run this code again and uh, here we go coroutines are getting printed continuously okay so now you can see time taken is five seconds so and if i just imagine if i've replaced this launch with a thread and if you're trying to print a thread one million times that will gonna cause an out of memory for my system so so this is the time comparison between thread and coroutines and that's how we can say that coroutines are lightweight threads and they are very time efficient and that is the reason why everyone says that coroutines are lightweight threads because they can do 
anything that a thread can do in very efficient way so i hope you have got this uh, concept of coroutine and from the next video onwards i'm going to show you the practical implementation of coroutines like like how to implement the coroutine and what are all the methods and classes coroutine have i'll see you in the next video <laughs>